several challenges. So the first one is aesthetics. Does, does your robot look pretty? The next one is code quality. So we're going to take a look at your code and we're going to have a panel of experts who will look at your code and determine how good it is, if it's well structured, if it's well commented. So don't forget to comment your code. He says as a programmer, he never does. <laughs> Uh, the next one is a line follower challenge. Um, some of you were in the workshop for the line follower this morning. Um, so we'll, we'll draw a, a black line on a white bit of paper as a course, and it's, it's a speed challenge around the course. Um, and there's various penalties if you drift off course. And then there's the obstacle course, where, which I'll pass over to Tim for. Okay, well the obstacle course hasn't been designed yet because we are coming up with all sorts of different challenges that your uh, robot is going to have to work its way through. <coughs> These will actually be a surprise. You won't know what it's going to be until you get here. So uh, you're, not, you're going to have to plan for your robot, robot to be able to go over different um, surfaces. So, um, hmm, shall I give an example? I'll give an example, but we're not doing this. We're not doing water. <laughs> Obvious reasons for that. We, we could do sand. We may not, but we could do. So, um, your robot has got to be able to cope with these different surfaces, different obstacles to go over, go through, that sort of thing, and uh, still be able to get to the end of the course. Um, you want to tell them what uh, things they can do uh, while they're going through this, if their robot stops or gets stuck or something like that. Let me just check the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have quite a number of rules that are actually up on this uh, on the PyWars.org website. Um, it's not a free-for-all uh, because uh, um, we've seen some, some really good robots that would pounce on the other robots. Things like uh, um, PyBorg's robot out there, the Doodleborg, it's absolutely massive and if it's going into sumo, it's not actually going to be able to um, uh, well, it wouldn't soon because it would just crush everything else. So we're, we're avoiding issues like that. So, um, basically, for, there will be a number of different bits of the obstacle course, and for each bit that you complete successfully, you'll get five points. And then it will be a race as to who can finish the course first, and we're doing the point system based on Formula One. Not the last race, it's not like 50 points for the last race for no reason at all. <laughs> um, next challenge is proximity alert. We're going to have you come in here and we're going to choose a wall. Or we might actually choose the door. Yeah, of course. It, we'll have something built. We'll have something built. And it'll be so can your robot detect what's ahead of it without hitting it? Um, for those of you who are in for the Pi to Go one, you'll know that ultrasonic distance sensor is good to a point, but there are other things that you can do that are more accurate. Um, the next one is robot golf. It's more like robot croquet. Um, you'll have your robot, we'll put a ball in front of it, and then you'll have to push the ball, or hit the ball, or possibly carry the ball, possibly, and then you'll have to get it through a hoop. Just a, an ordinary hoop, probably like a croquet. It'll be, it'll be like a mouse, mouse hole yeah, type thing. Yeah, mouse hole. Do um, you want to tell them about the other three? Okay, so we've got a few uh, other challenges. Um, one of them is the straight line speed test. Now that's actually quite a challenge. Um, keeping your robot in a straight line is not necessarily that easy because, uh, as you know, you've got two motors driving uh, your robot. You may have more, or you've got legs, perhaps. However, keeping it in a straight line may not be that easy. So, we'll have a course for you to go down, a straight course, and um, we'll go to time how quick it's going to take for your robot to get from one end to the other. Now, we'll have sides to this, so you possibly may hit the side. That's going to slow you down. Um, so there's, uh, there's a few challenges involved there actually getting down to the other end at the quickest. Um, the next one is our closest we're going to get to the ro uh, Robot Wars uh, style event. It's going to be sumo wrestling. Um, now, 
one of the things, one of the rules we're going to have is you can't damage the other robot. The reason for that is people have spent a lot of love and money in building their robots and it can be quite upsetting if a robot gets trashed, damaged, pie destroyed, that sort of thing. So, um, we're going to avoid that this time. And um, you're going to be in a ring and you're going to push the other robot outside that ring. However you like to do it without doing any damage to the other robot. And the last of it is an autonomous 3.0, as we're calling it. Um, it's taking your robot down the corridor and getting it to turn around again and come back to you all on its own. That um, should be, uh, it can be a little tricky to get it to, to do that because you'll have a, a, a limited amount of space for your robot to turn around in. And you've got to get it turned around quite accurately to go through the full 300, uh, sorry, full 180 degrees uh, to come back to you. So that's that's going to be the, the final challenge. General rules. General rules, yeah. Okay, general rules. You've got to have a Raspberry Pi on it. I know that's really, really obvious. But it does mean that you can have other boards like Arduino's working in concert with the Raspberry Pi as long as the Raspberry Pi maintains control and it's at the core of the thing. We're going to be getting people to tell us what their robots are going to be before they build, before they go too far down it. They're going to sort of tell us what their robot's going to be so that we don't have any on-the-day disqualifications. Um, there'll be two categories of robot, those that cost £75 and below and those that cost £75 and above. If you get yours directly on £75, we'll decide which one you're in. Um, <laughs> You can use a piece of equipment like a laptop or a mobile phone to control it, um, which doesn't count towards the cost of the robot, because obviously laptops cost a lot of money. Um, your robots have to be powered by batteries, so you can't do a, you, there's no way you can do a straight line speed test with a cable dragging behind it, so it's got to be powered by batteries. <laughs> um, some of the challenges will be mandatory. The only two that are mandatory are the aesthetics and the code quality. Everything else is optional because some robots will be able to do all of them, some robots will be able to do some of them. Um, as well as the main challenge based competition, we've got other prizes like smallest robot, best non-competing robot, we're going to have a show and tell area where people can show off their robots. So if you've got a robot arm that, that does stuff, you'll be entered into that competition. I know it's a competition for non-competing robots. Um, best autonomous robot, which will be based on the points you get from entering the autonomous bits of the competition. Uh, best remote controlled, which is the same for the remote control bits. Most feature-rich robot, who can cram the most sensors onto their robot. If you can do anything like we had up on the screen earlier, wow. Um, the Jim Darby Prize for excessive blinkiness. Those of you who know Jim will know how much he loves a good LED. And so how many LEDs can you cram onto your robot and get them flashing? Most innovative robot, which could mean anything, and at this moment in time does mean anything. And most visually appealing robot, so it'll be the winner of the aesthetics competition. Um, we're not allowing flying robots. On account of the fact that the obstacle course would be pointless. <laughs> flying over it, um, and also it's, it's just too dangerous to have robots flying all over the place. Um, anything else you want to add? Um, well, um, the competition, uh, the, the entries, we're opening entries for this competition um, on the 15th of September. So uh, get your minds in gear, try and decide what you're going to make, if you're going to make a robot. Um, or if you're going to display uh, a robot on show and tell. Um, how long will the entry, be, uh, the entry form be open for? Until we sold for 16. <laughs> so, we're going to have 16 places available. Um, we've worked out a timetable. It's going to be a long day, but um, we've got uh, 16 places available. So, the sooner you can actually get in and get, on, um, get uh, a competition entry, the better, uh, and you'll, you'll get a kind of slot in, the, uh, in, in our list. 
Now we've been very fortunate, we've got some sponsorship for this event, so we're going to be able to provide some, some prizes and we're also uh, going to um, be able to <coughs> build some uh, circuits and so, so we're going to have some timing and I'm going to tell you about sponsorship for that because I've got it today. Yay. Uh, and we're going to build the courses, so we've been lucky enough to uh, secure some sponsorship by uh, quite a few companies out there in the uh, in the arena, CPC is one of them. Um, Linux Voice have uh, have contacted us and asked uh, and said, you "Have a subscription and a T-shirt for one of your prizes." Got Raspberry O, Raspberry TV has uh, supplied that. Raspberry Pi today, Magpie, and you can see it's all on there. So we've 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 got a lot of lot of interest in the industry um, uh, with this competition. So uh, please get your thoughts together about a pie based robot that uh, you can enter and, and try and win. Has anybody got any questions? Yes. How are you going to measure the distance to the wall or the proximity of the wall? That is up to you. Oh, how are we going? How are we going? Are we going? Are we going? Yes, how close you know, you, you get to the wall? We'll probably get, well, we'll, if you're not very close, it'll be a ruler. Um, we might get some calipers so we can actually tell how close we've got calipers to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to measure. I guess you're going to measure from the closest point of the robot. Yes. yes. <coughs> but it mustn't be touching and it mustn't have to touch. So, there's no, you can't use those sensors that detect um, touches. I can't remember what they're called. Microswitches. Micros you can't use microswitches to detect the ball. Because you will have touched it. Yeah. Will the wall be white? Probably. It may be. <laughs> <laughs> now there's um. We, we will. You will get enough notice of things like that. There's there's things like um the three point turn. We haven't we haven't measured it yet, so we don't know exactly the distances you, you need to travel. Uh, we've still got to. Um... We've still got to design a lot of the courses, um, so as soon as we, we've done that, we'll be busy with getting this jam uh, here and there. Um, we'll be designing these uh, all the courses and revealing as much information as we feel is necessary. So your question is, what colour will the wall be? It's actually um, quite relevant because um, uh, it may depend on what some of the sensors you're going to use and the other users. Uh, Shining the white on it, that sort of thing, then you'll need to know that. So we will reveal that sort of information before, uh, beforehand. However, I won't be telling you what's on the obstacle course until today. Anybody else have questions? Mike? When you go to a wall, where do you measure when it's actually stopped? Because some people might want to do a slow approach, so a, a proportional can slow down. There'll be a time limit. <laughs> There's a time there, and, and it'll, it'll be up to you to tell us when you when you stopped. When you feel, when you feel that it's it's close enough, or as close as it's going to get. Yes. What's the size of the robot you have to have? It's all got to fit on an A4 sheet of paper. A3, A3 sheet of paper, which is two A4 sheets together. Now you would get something that's tied oh, together, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> one of these, and one of these on top. There, that's it. It's got to fit in that in that. No overhangs. <coughs> So, um, if you've got something like the, the, the street and scoot things like Doodle Walk, which is massive. The only reason there's a size limit is because we've got to build the obstacle course and there's going to be a corner in it. And <laughs> we want you to get around the corner. Anybody else? Um, are you going to be announcing the, the colour and size of the ball? Yes. Good question. Yeah. 